Welcome to Behind the Lens, an ongoing conversation about all things in Eugene relating to film. Tonight, my guest is Mike Anderson. Hi, Mike. Hello, Tom. Thank you for having me. And we're going to talk about the Shaggy Dog Project, which is a community organization that has been going for several years now. Tell us about the Shaggy Dog. Well, the Shaggy Dog Project started uh, a little over five years ago. Uh, Shaggy Dog is associated with DIVA, the Downtown Initiative for the Visual Arts. And uh, in the beginning, that was our meeting space, was the DIVA uh, showroom in the, down at Broadway and Olive. As time has gone by, uh, we're now meeting here at the community television studios at uh, Sheldon High School. And um, what, um, what is your memory of your beginning in the Shaggy Dog Project? Rainy nights with leaky roof in an old building downtown, buckets in place, smell of mold. <laughs> yes, we started in very humble origins, uh, but um, uh, Neil Miller, uh, a local uh, film uh, producer and director and writer, uh, independent, uh, along with my host, Mr. Tom Blank, uh, director uh, from Hollywood television days, uh, started the Shaggy Dog Project and approached a number of local writers and local filmmakers and folks who simply had an interest in making short film. And uh, so we began uh, a little over five years ago on sat Saturdays, always meeting on Saturday, at the Diva uh, building downtown that I was talking about, and writing short scripts. And uh, after a while, we had some material, and we started making our first short films. And what was the first picture that you worked on? Uh, the first one was called Doing the Right Thing, and uh, Caitlin Elliott, I believe I'm saying her name correctly. She's no longer with Shaggy Dog, but she wrote that particular uh, script. And um, we commenced to shoot on uh, a January day in, in downtown. We decided that our short films should, um, at that point, we wanted to really emphasize downtown and, and emphasize Eugene and uh, as our setting for, for films. And so, um, our location was the uh, little antique, uh, I think it's called the Oregon Antique Mall, I believe was the name, it's, it's closed these days. Copper Penny had been a name of it at one point, uh, down on Willamette Street. And that was our setting for the, the film, uh, Doing the Right Thing. And, and uh, um, how did you get a cast to participate in this uh, original dramatic piece? Well, um, maybe I could just step aside just a little bit to talk about the process putting the film together Please. to begin with, because uh, first you have to have a script. You have to have a good idea, and the, the script doesn't have to be completely polished before you begin, because there's a pre-production phase that includes casting. So we have a little, little bit of time to polish the script, uh, which we continue to work on, but in the meantime, we uh, had a casting session and put out the word through um, local theater companies and got the word out to actors. We also had, uh, I believe, Reva Kaufman helped on, on that one. Uh, she's a local theater director and uh, very helpful with casting. And we did auditions. Uh, They're in the Diva building and we selected um, uh, two principal actors, two, two women, uh, who would play the, the, the comedy characters in, in the film, and a number of um, bystanders and uh, the shopkeeper and, and so on. So you, you, you actually cast both speaking roles plus the extras. Yes, yes, and um, I, I, every film has some lead characters, uh, there's usually a protagonist, or somebody who has uh, their day is going along normally and then something happens, it changes, 
uh, something happens to them or they're launched onto some kind of adventure. In this particular story, uh, there's also a moral tale, a, a twist in the film. Uh, the young woman was on her way um, to a birthday party and uh, hadn't yet bought a gift. She was in a hurry. She decided she was going to run into the store and get something very quickly. But um, she got a birthday card, and she'd been looking at a little ceramic shaggy dog, I believe it was. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, when she got out to the car, she realized that she'd accidentally walked out without paying for it. Well, she's late for the party, but this is the turning point. What is she going to do? She has the gift. She's late. But doing the right thing means going back in to pay for it. So, and, and then what happened? Well, she goes back in to pay for it. And of course, there's a long line of people at the register. Now they're busy. She keeps getting phone calls from her friend who's driving the car saying, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And she uh, can't seem to get there. And, uh, and then uh, she decides to just go put it back on the shelf. And she drops it and breaks it. Now what do you do? Well, now you're in, you're in trouble because the owner's son comes up and uh, he's got a little problem of his own. He's recently been released from jail and he's just trying to work there, but he starts picking up, hitting on uh, the young woman. Uh, he actually has an ankle bracelet that he's wearing. So we're getting kind of deep into the plot of the story, but, but basically the, she has the embarrassment of all of the shop owners and everybody being, in, everybody being involved in the end, though, she has done the right thing, and, uh, and she's able to head, head on to the party. So it's a story that has a moral twist, and it's, um, it's a little bit ironic, but it's uh, basically a positive statement. Yes, and we did it in just a little over five minutes. So I think that's one of the interesting things about what Shaggy Dog does, is learn to write a three-act structure, You've got a, a beginning, a middle, and an end with a couple of twists or turning points in between. Yet, all of that happens in five to ten minutes on the, on the short films. And how long does it take to actually compose such a script? Since a part of the teaching and the learning is the writing process and everyone around the table is interested in writing, it probably takes us a lot longer than than necessary. <laughs> we argue quite a bit over what should, should be in the script and what changes to make, but everybody gets to participate and be part of the, the writing process that way. So it sounds like you felt some um, sense of reward or completion in, uh, by participating in this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, especially once you move into the next phases when you're actually on production and everyone uh, gets to learn to take a, a, a job, if you will, they can learn camera, they can learn lights, they can run the little clapper thing, uh, they can uh, uh, be the producer, or they can be the, uh, the director, they can be the, uh, the editor. All of these people are needed, and so the Shaggy Dog Collective brings people in, tries to teach them the skills, and lets them work on these projects. So it's a question of getting into the art of composition and photography, but essentially it's learning craft. It's learning the way to do things and somehow getting through. Now, you certainly didn't have enough people in your group itself, though did you reach outside for additional help? On our, our first projects, we did, um, and particularly for the key most key position of the cinematographer. Uh, we had the volunteer assistance of Mark Stafford with uh, Stafford Productions to do the, to do the camera work. Uh, and in the earliest days, we had a, uh, a woman, I, I can't remember her name now, who works in the industry on sound, and so she helped out as we were learning, learning the skills. Uh, but, but over time, uh, after three or four of these pictures, we found that within our group, uh, we could now pretty much assign all of the roles and, and not bring in outside of the group. Uh, although we did still have some casting assistance uh, for a while, but now we're even doing our, we're doing our own casting, we're doing our own uh, cinematography, we do our own lighting, 
and we've had a number of individuals get interested in and are now capable of, of even doing the editing and the polishing the film ready for projection on a big screen. And where do you show it when you finish something like this? Thank you. That's, that's an excellent question. We, our, our goal is to make films that are uh, low budget, easy to, fairly easy to make, teach a, a skills to everybody, but in the end our reward is to show them on a big screen. They, they, the, the goal is to learn to make film of a quality sufficient to enter the film in an international film festival competition. In the local area, what we we have an arrangement with um, uh, Eugene International Film Festival with Mike Dilley, and Shaggy Dog has a showcase there. The film festival is in the fall each year in, in November out at the Regal Cinemas at Valley River. And uh, we uh, are fortunate to have in our group another one of our members uh, is actually the projectionist. Uh, Matt Laubach is the projectionist at the film festival. So we're, we're certain that our films get to look good up on the big screen. And that is, the, that is a good reward. And I, uh, if I remember correctly, this uh, last year when we had a, uh, a showing at the Valley River uh, Theaters for the festival, uh, it was a sold-out event. That's right. Uh, we're, I think the theater seats maybe 150 people, and we had uh, people, Fire Marshal, I hope, isn't listening. Maybe there were a couple more people in there than seats but, available. Than should have been yes. there, all right. Uh, that's a good idea of what the Shaggy Dog Project does. It's a, uh, a community-based organization that offers instruction as well as opportunity to actually make a picture. Yes, and <laughs> this means that it, it's somewhat a collective of people who already have skills in photography or a little bit of background in writing or in uh, some aspect of film and they would just like to work on a crew and be part of. But it's not an absolute requirement. We've had a number of people who have come in the door with absolutely zero experience and just join in and start, start learning the fun and the art, the craft of, of filmmaking. Yes, it's, it's, it is a craft. Uh, let me ask you about your personal involvement as a producer. Uh, what picture did you produce for The Shaggy Dog? Well, um, the, the first picture that we did, uh, that we were talking about uh, doing the right thing, I was recovering from knee surgery and I didn't have a lot of skills to bring into the group at this point myself. And I helped out at craft services, in other words, <laughs> uh, make sure the coffee pot stays full and just observing. But by our second film uh, called Moving Day, um, I was able to help get the locations for that. And eventually I was asked to be the producer. And it turned out to be a role that worked well for me, um, and now I've been producer on several of the of the Shaggy Dog films. Which was the most difficult for you? Each presented its own challenges uh, and in in different ways. Um, I think perhaps one of the more challenging ones was a film called Morning After. Wonderful little script by uh, Kathleen Caprario Ulrich, local woman who uh, is also an artist and teaches at LCC. Um, Morning After is a is a the basic story idea is that a, an older woman whose husband has passed away finds it very difficult to date again or integrate back into a into social life, and all the best men seem to be taken. She eventually realizes that's because they're married. Every, every, all the other men, you know, they're not toilet trained and so on. They, so they, these, the best men are married. So she comes up with the idea of the woman who really wants to get a good man looks at the obituaries, mm -hmm. and when a man passes, or when a, the woman passes, uh, they're right there at the, the funeral home or the graveside and ready to start meeting this new eligible bachelor. The reason I say that this was a more challenging film from the 
it wasn't just from the producer's point of view, but I think for most of the crew, was <clears throat> to tell this story well, it required more scenes, more setups, more actors, both indoor and outdoor, such as working at Graveside, uh, out in the elements. Uh, how do you get electricity out there? How do you get the hot coffee, which you got to have out there? Uh, where is the nearest bathroom, and how do people take a bathroom break? These are part of the producer's job. Essentially, the producer's job in the way we're doing our films. You have to think of anything and everything that needs to be done from who's putting uh, batteries in the camera to lights to coffee. You have to think all of those things out and find someone to fill that role that's competent, that can do the job. And if they're a student and they're learning, we have to be sure that there's somebody backing up or looking over the shoulder and helping. And so the, the, the difficulty here is just the, the larger um, number of things that could go wrong. The more actors you have, the more locations you have, the more outdoor scenes you have, the more things that can go wrong. And I think for me, I found the secret of, of being a producer is that you've got your cell phone and you've got every number in there you could ever need ready to dial. You've got a notebook with anything that you don't have in your cell phone and you have a backup plan. So that if, let's say that it's raining today and now we've got 30 people standing out there, what are we going to do? You can't just not do anything and just go home. So you have to have a kind of a rainy day plan of what you're going to do. Now, I think that brings up the concept that uh, we kind of went over easily at the beginning, which is the goal was to approximate professional procedures in the production so that uh, uh, even though we're not in Hollywood, we had the Hollywood model as a reference so that the, uh, uh, the tasks, though they may not be filled by uh, technicians as skilled or as practiced as Hollywood uh, technicians, were um, the roles got assigned and the tasks were fulfilled by people who were willing. Willing and I would say with extreme enthusiasm. Uh, one of the things that worked, has worked well with Shaggy Dog is that everybody brings um, a certain seriousness to what, whatever job they've got. You're here in Eugene, Oregon, and you've never been on a Hollywood set, but you're running around with a title, mm -hmm. and you maybe you look on Wikipedia and find out what they do, or you get a book from the library and figure out what that person does, but everybody takes their jobs very seriously. They try very hard. There's, it's built on cooperation, uh, people skills, working with each other, and I think above all is a sense of having fun, that we're, we're in this. There, there are a number of folks in the group, perhaps some of the younger ones in particular, who are hoping to have a career in film or are actually working on productions that might come through in the Willamette Valley here. But I think a, a large portion of the folks in Shaggy Dog are doing it just for the sheer pleasure of the fun of, of working on them. It's an amateur project. organization in the sense of amateur means for the love of. That's, I, I, th that's good, but let me add to it because okay. nobody gets paid. So it's truly amateur. No one gets paid. And uh, in addition to that, the members have paid dues, which have been changing and fluctuating over time. But in the beginning, we charged uh, $40 per month to, be, to work. And that money goes into a pot through the nonprofit organization that gives us basic, uh, a basic budget. These films are very low budget, but it's pretty hard to shoot one on zero budget. Yeah, it's not no budget. It's, yes. It's low budget. So, so a typical film for us would run about $200 a day, of which about half of that cost would probably go for food, food and coffee for actors and crew. 
and the other half would go into things such as um, makeup, paint for a set object, or um, just a, a myriad of uh, batteries. There's always something that you have to spend some money on, but we found we could do it for, for about $200 a day. And what about the places that you shot, the locations that you chose? Were, were they compensated in any way, or were they all volunteer? Thank you. I, I would like to give um, more than just an answer, but a shout out to uh, our local community here for being so helpful in providing the locations that we need, because you can't shoot on such a low budget without free use of your location. Something. And so I, I, I will, one thing we did have early on was a letter of introduction from Eugene's mayor, uh, Kitty Piercy, and that helped in getting our, our foot in the door, if you will, our dog paw in the door to, uh, to get started. But several of our shots have been done at the Downtown Athletic Club, so we'd like to give a special thanks thanks there. Um, with uh, four different floors, there's, well, there's plenty of places to choose where we could turn a, uh, a restaurant scene in there or a bathroom scene or uh, an elevator scene. There were so many things we could shoot in a, in a location like that. And that was successful for you? Yes, yes. Uh, we, in fact, we've used the athletic club on, I think, three different uh, films now, and they've just been been wonderful to work with, and they, they've never uh, charged us for the facility, although we did expend some of our craft service money there, uh, reciprocating a bit by buying coffee and pastries through, sure. through the athletic club. Uh, and, and other places that have helped out, for example, University of Oregon even. One of our films, we spent two full days over in Chapman Hall shooting over there. We did need an, an employee uh, to be with us who would volunteer their time all day. We also shot um, at uh, one of the local um, mortuaries, uh, and, and we had to have an, em an employee come in uh, to help with that. But, but for the most part, everything has been uh, just to totally free and available to us. Extreme cooperation from a lot of local businesses. Donation to a civic project. Yes, I, I think a lot of folks view it that way, that um, uh, this helps promote Eugene, it pro promotes downtown in, in the way that our sponsor's downtown initiative for the visual arts. We were meeting downtown <coughs> long before the recovery of downtown that we see now. Uh, as I said, in the early days we had uh, buckets catching leaky water coming through the old building's roof. but. Um, Shaggy Dog is very much a part of the community, and uh, there's a lot of community spirit, and I think that really opens the doors for us when we go to the owner of a building and ask uh, to be able to use it. Like our next project, for example, right now what we're working on is a film that will take place in a barbershop, and with a barbershop quartet, local, local singers, and uh, so we've approached a couple local barbershops, and are just now in tentative planning stages, uh, and someone will be donating that space to us uh, to be able to make our next film. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, uh, mention in regard to this project? Uh, well, I think um, our coming year now, we've also taken on a new phase. After, after five years of making, we've made nine short films now that have shown at uh, the film festival at Valley River on the big screen. Um, but now we're also working cooperatively with community television as we're learning right now how to make little TV programs, uh, how to make a set here in the Sheldon High School facility used by community television. And so during our coming year, we have a two-pronged approach to what we're doing. We're continuing to work on scripts for short film. We hope to have a, enough film to be able to do another showcase in November at Valley River. Uh, but in the meantime, we're also getting our members trained in studio and film, uh, excuse me, uh, television production techniques. And so what I would really like to add is 
this is really open to anyone who's viewing this right now being made for community television. And if anyone is interested in being involved, we uh, meet on Saturdays at the community television uh, facility. Uh, the name of our group again is Shaggy Dog Project. And we have a website, shaggydogproject.com. And so you can contact us, uh, anyone who would be interested in joining could contact us through shaggydog.com or through community television, channel 29 uh, at the Sheldon facility. They also have their own website. Well, thank you very much. Now, there's, you know, we have a couple more minutes. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention about the, uh, uh, what's happened to, say, uh, the morning after picture after we finished? Oh, thank you. Uh, and the, the morning after picture written by Kathleen Capraro Ulrich um, is very dear to her heart. She uh, is personally quite invested in making that particular story a success. And the short film that we made is somewhat of a pilot or a calling card for her as she is seeking to take it now to uh, a full film. Uh, it needs, needs um, feature some length. backing, of feature length. And that's beyond what, what Shaggy Dog can do. But in her efforts, she took this to Cannes, France for the uh, film festival in the, this past year. Uh, in a um, uh, the court metrage, it's called, kind of a, a, um, a side fringe event. or side <clears throat> festival of the Cannes Festival. Uh, she went to France. She had a wonderful time, and uh, it was actually showing our film um, over there. So this is a wonderful uh, opportunity for her and our group as well. So we can look forward to um, a longer version of the morning after. I think that's, that's her, her hope, yes. And um, right now though, I, I think it, it's worth emphasizing that this is an ongoing thing. We're in our sixth year. We have several scripts that are in their early stages right now. So this would be a very good time for someone to be involved with the group who would like to come in and start learning things pretty much from the beginning, because we're working on the scripts. We still have to choose which scripts we want to do. Uh, we're going to need to choose positions, such as a, a producer and a director, some key folks who can move a project forward. And we're going to have to find some locations. Somebody has to go out and get those. Uh, and so it's also a good time for folks to join, because Community Television has put on a number of uh, production classes so that our Shaggy Dog members can learn the, the full operation with the cameras and so on. So right now is a good time for folks to join or to come down and check us out. And it's, it's kind of interesting that <clears throat> right now we are talking on a program that is produced by the Shaggy Dog Project. Yes. And it's available for anyone that wants to come in to play with us and have a good time. So thank you, Mike. Well, thank, thank you very you, much. Welcome, and good luck with the Shaggy Dog Project.